वेलकम टू स्टोरी बोर्ड आई एम शुबानी घरत एडवर्टाइजिंग होल्डिंग कंपनी ओमनीकॉम रिसेंटली फॉर्म ओमनीकॉम एडवर्टाइजिंग सर्विसेज विद डीडीबी मुद्रा बीबीडीओ एंड टीबीडब्ल्यूए अंडर वन रूफ एंड नेम्ड आदित्य कांति एज सीईओ ऑफ द न्यूली फॉर्म ओमनीकॉम एडवर्टाइजिंग सर्विसेज ग्रुप इन इंडिया कांति विल ओवरसी ओमनीकॉम्स क्रिएटिव एजेंसीज इन द रीजन फोकसिंग ऑन टैलेंट क्रॉस एजेंसी कोलैबोरेशन एंड इनोवेशन टू ड्राइव ग्रोथ इन वन ऑफ द कंपनीज फास्टेस्ट ग्रोइंग मार्केट्स अकॉर्डिंग टू द होल्डिंग कंपनीज चेयरमैन एंड सीईओ John Ren to tell us more about this we are catching up with Aditya he is also sharing with us the plan going forward with this new structure and with increasing nervousness with regards to consolidation and mergers in the ad fraternity how did the leadership respond to the news Aditya welcome to CNBC TV 18 thank you for having me So tell us uh, about creating Omnicom Advertising Services, uh, where you have uh, BBDO, TBW, and DDB Mudra under one umbrella. Uh, what was the thought behind this, and what were the kind of conversations that you had with the HQ with John Ren? There are a few component pieces that uh, are driving the strategic move and this focus. One of which, perhaps the most important of which, is the importance of India mm. as a engine for growth. Hmm. for Omnicom globally right um john has uh, publicly stated his commitment to this market um uh, both as a local market for us to compete in um hmm. and win but hmm. also as a uh, source of talent hmm. for global markets sure. right and um, i think these two pieces um and a belief that each of our component agencies hmm. Hmm. will get stronger hmm. with the uh kind of a, a more consolidated more coordinated effort hmm. for with Omnicom both within India and globally is what has guided uh this thinking so it's you know a combination of what we need to do to be able to win here uh more hmm. consistently and to fulfill on this local market's potential but also what is um, i think a really exciting opportunity for talent in this country to be able to serve um, a, a great um, uh, international global opportunity through these incredible creative networks clients have responded well it's a couple of days it's early days but i think we've we've uh, the the early feedback from clients has been good hmm. um it is in many ways uh in line with what clients are expecting hmm. of us hmm. um and uh clients are preparing their own Hmm. journeys for the future as well and i think this combination of creative brilliance which hmm. is what the uh the bbdos the tbwas and the ddbs of the world have been known for for sure. decades now right sure. uh for doing the best creative work in the world and that's what we do here in india as well marrying that with the full the rest of the funnel right yeah. being able to do that in a more seamless way hmm. uh closer interaction with our media partners closer hmm. interaction with uh all of the other elements that uh, go into delivering the uh, a brand's experience in its in its fullest yeah um uh, i think that piece is uh, a piece that clients have been grappling with too right uh, and every company has its um own answer to that yeah. question this is ours tell me first how have the agency leaders responded uh, yeah. you know to this uh, announcement at a time also uh, interestingly this announcement came in at a time when uh, we heard like a couple of changes at wpp yes. um as well and a lot of uh, conversation on mergers and consolidation happening yes. around uh, in the advertising industry over the past uh, couple of years yeah. uh, so how have your agency leaders at omnicom responded to this yeah. it's been positive this is very much about doubling down on the distinctive cultures and the presence of the individual agency brands yeah uh um, i understand the other perspective right mm. um there's a lot of fear perhaps, amongst uh, the agencies right now perhaps in yeah. in a situation where the guiding principle mm. is as you put it con- consolidation or merger mm. the guiding principle here is quite different it mm. is the belief that these three agency brands are thriving uh, mm. are strong mm. are relevant mm. and that they need uh to be uh, invested in and mm. that they need to and that and that is the design of the structure mm. which is that the rest of omnicom both in india and abroad will make these three uh, uh brands stronger in yeah. the local market and i think with that kind of an approach you you have a very different perspective and read on mm. why 
we're doing what we're doing. And um, in fact, if anything, there's optimism and excitement hmm. to say that we're able to now as TBWA or DDB or BBDO hmm. be able to take to clients um, a, a set of capabilities and offerings um, in a way which we haven't, uh, which our co competitors perhaps hmm. uh, will will struggle with. But tell me, because uh, you know, because of these concerns, uh, did you, as a leader, at any point in time, had to reassure the leadership and had to reassure the talent that yes, your individual brands will be maintained within this new structure? It, it is. It's been communicated all along. Hmm. I think in. Omnicom's history hmm. that Omnicom as a holding group believes in the power hmm. of the individual agency brands. Hmm. It's it's the it, the founding myth, as it hmm. were, of the holding company. Hmm. Right? right through the the eighties and the nineties, you will have seen that hmm. that uh, it's a light touch hmm. always at hmm. a holding group level, and yeah. that is the reason why. Hmm. On the creative services side, these three agency networks have done as well hmm. as they have. Hmm. Uh, you will have seen that in hmm. all of the metrics that you measure a creative business with, right? Whether it is uh, growth, whether it is the ability to be able to attract great talent, hmm. uh, what our clients make of us, hmm. and our performance at the industry hmm. benchmarks, right? Can, spikes, what have you. This has happened mainly because uh, at a, there's a very clear commitment within the Omnicom structure of mm -hmm. the respect for strong individual agency brands. So I think sure. that's an important part of the, of the equation. Equally, it's been tried and tested and done with success mm -hmm. uh, in Omnicom Media Group. Right? Yeah. So we've seen that play out. Mm -hmm. um, and it has uh, uh, resulted in the uh, creation and uh, uh, transformation of that media business on the back of, of very, very mm. exciting media brands like PhD, OMD, and Hatch and Sciences. So there is a precedent as well, right? Mm. And there's a strong principle mm. guiding the thinking and a precedent mm. um, within Omnicom of how this can work. So I do. I think it makes it a little bit easier, sure. um, and uh, to, to for everyone to focus yeah. on the excitement and the potential for growth um, in when when we organize ourselves in this form. Yeah, and what are uh, you know what are the short term uh, plans and the long term goals under the new structure that you have as yes. a leader? Oh, uh, well, there's a lot to do, right? Mm. Uh, and I think the most important. Hmm. Uh, as I've said earlier in this conversation as well, is to ensure hmm. that we do whatever it takes to invest in the three agency hmm. brands and their growth, hmm. right? And there are different ways in which we could uh, potentially do that. Uh, one of which is to is to identify clients that that will benefit from now and in the future hmm. the uh, skill sets residing within Omnicom. Hmm outside of the creative agency networks, sure. right? Uh, that will benefit clients. So I think that's an immediate hmm. first step. Hmm. I think the second really important um, opportunity, which is uh, uh, clear and present, hmm. is particularly with Omnicom's stated commitment on um, uh, tripling its workforce in India, hmm. is on the talent side, is to look at uh, all of the ways in which these very attractive uh, local agency networks hmm. and Omnicom's reputation as being the most creative company in the world hmm. can be harnessed hmm. to bring in the best um, uh, talent in this country, um, wherever it is in Omnicom hmm. that it makes sense for it to happen, um, sure. including on the global delivery side. Hmm. Right. So I think these are two very immediate uh, areas of focus. Um, and then there are lots of uh, foundational Hmm. Uh, aspects of agency management, hmm. including our push in sustainability, our push in diversity and inclusion, hmm. where there are pockets of excellence hmm. uh, within Omnicom that we can all learn from hmm. and grow from by applying that at, at scale. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's the, the third, perhaps more medium to kind of long term work that we uh, will will do um, yeah. as Omnicom together in India. Yeah. Uh, you know, to an extent, Omnicom with this um, new structure with the creative agencies is slightly late to the party because WPP has been doing it for years now. 
publicist group with its publicist one you know has been doing it again for past couple of years um, as the leader of this new entity aditya what according to you are some of the learnings and mistakes that you know you want to take into account while stepping into the new role without reflecting on whether it's late or early um because i i do believe that we are ahead of time hmm. um on this journey and the reason is because you would have experienced this with some of our competitors as well sure is that a a structure and a system of this nature hmm. only works hmm. when the components are strong hmm. and i think in that omnicom is unique hmm. i think we are privileged to have a roster of individual agency brands hmm. across the full spectrum hmm. that are amongst the strongest in this local market and the strongest in the world hmm. and without that hmm. no amount of holding group uh organization hmm. or posturing hmm. uh makes any real difference hmm. not to our clients not to our people hmm. and i think in that Hmm. we are uh, both well positioned hmm. and early hmm. to the party because we believe that we're at a at a point in time where all of the capabilities that are meaningful and relevant hmm. to our clients hmm. are housed in very very strong uh teams hmm. uh, and structures that we can now start to join the dots on hmm. in a way that that fully uh hmm. prepares us hmm. for the opportunities that our clients are are forcing i it's quite different hmm. i think from the approaches of um uh, uh other companies in our in our industry and category and i think it is it's distinct um and strategically hmm. um different hmm. but more powerful in my view aditya thank you so much thanks for joining us today thank you for having me shibani and uh, thank you for the conversation It is time for a short break on the other side we have Harsh Rajdan Dentsu's new South Asia CEO speaking about his vision for Dentsu moving forward and plans to revive the agency group Welcome back in 2021 the Indian unit of Dentsu group was rocked by a series of senior level exits and a lot of rumors and confusion around the fate of agencies and talent within the group post this Dentsu in India made significant changes and rejected its leadership to script a turnaround but then Narayan Devanathan who had taken charge at Dentsu back then after all the old and familiar faces had left also left dentsu now after many months restructuring and getting new leaders things seem to be finally falling back in place for the agency group devanathan is also back in office he has taken up a consulting role as group chief strategic advisor the agency also appointed harsh rajdan as chief executive for its south asia office this post was vacant since the sudden exit of its former ceo anand bhadkamkar who quit in september 2021 we got up with harsh and he says firstly he wants to bring in stability at dentsu listen in harsh welcome to cnbc tv 18 thank you So taking on a new role at Dentsu uh, after like what the agency has been through over the past couple of years almost like an apocalypse so to speak uh, tell us so uh, what were your initial thoughts what was uh, you know your perception of the agency when you decided you know to take up this challenge so i did know that uh, uh, there were these challenges which were existing not only in Dentsu but generally in the agency world but i was uh, I was actually captivated by the opportunity uh, and the vision which uh, uh, which uh, our Japanese uh, colleagues and my boss Rob had pasted. It was all around the new one day suit, trying to shape the future, and not doing what was done only in the past. Hmm. Uh, it connected to a lot of my earlier experiences, and I thought that if you join the two, it'll be one hell of a ride. Yeah. Harsh now speaking about your earlier roles uh, you have been with FMCG companies yes but your most recent roles uh, you know previous roles have been with uh, big consulting firms how according to you uh, were you well placed or set up to take an a group agency 
kind of a role within an advertising agency kind of a setup? I understood the client side when I was at PepsiCo hmm. and Unilever. And the experience at Accenture gave me a well-rounded view of digital transformation and what the new age digital looks like. That's what clients are looking forward to. The last uh, five years at KPMG, I was in a client and solutions role, uh, listening to clients, trying to serve their needs through whatever we had at hand. And the biggest learning after coming in here is also that clients have been telling me, listen to us. You people have not been listening to us. Listen to us and work will come your way. So you're telling us the previous leaders were not listening to the clients within Dentsu. No, I won't say that. I think uh, it's just about the uh, about the feeling that clients have. Perhaps uh, uh, we've not paid enough attention uh, mm. uh, to what the clients are saying. And we assume that the solutions we have are what the clients want. I think at times you may not have the answers. Um, uh, but you should have a discussion. Say this is something I would advise you to get done by X, Y and Z. Mm. But be honest about it. Uh, I don't think most of us, including I, have been honest all the time, but I think that's the only way which you can go by. Yeah, and you know, this role that you've taken of a CEO has been vacant since Anand Bhadkamkar left in 2021. So when you joined, I believe in May, uh, what was your immediate mandate when you joined uh, Densu back then? The first thing was stabilizing uh, Densu. We didn't have a CEO for two and a half years, as mm. you said. Uh, making, feel com making people feel comfortable. Uh, making them feel that there's someone who is going to listen to them. A lot of things happened in the last two and a half years and there was a lot of confusion between the region and the global team and what mm -hmm. they were trying to interpret versus India. Uh, we now have stability. Uh, mm. You see stability in the leadership, stability in terms of how we're going forward, stability in terms of pitch to our clients. I think that was the biggest thing in the first three to four months and now we move on from there. So much of the stability has been achieved. Also some of uh, the old hands like Narayan Devanathan, he has returned although in the consulting role at Densu. Uh, tell us how has the client perception about Densu changed today? There was of course erosion of client trust that we have seen, uh, you know, over the, what happened over the events that we've seen over the past two, two and a half years. Uh, so tell us how has the client perception changed? Client perception has remained pretty solid over the last uh, few years, I must say. It's, it has gone down. But, you know, I have uh, visited about uh, 60 to 70 CEOs, CMOs over the last five months. Mm. Uh, each of them say something that, thank you for coming and meeting me. Thank you for telling us the new story about Densu. Uh, thank you for being a different person uh, to what we've seen in the general agency world. Uh, and every time we've been called to a pitch, I realized that I thought we were underestimating ourselves. Uh, uh, Yes, you've had a few glitches uh, around some losses, but you also had many wins. Uh, some of them we can talk about, some of them I can't. But I think uh, uh, it's been, I've been pleasantly surprised at the kind of brand equity Densu had and mm -hmm. the way we are bouncing back. What are some of the wins that have happened over the past couple of months? I know the losses since the start of the year with, you know, some of the bigger ones to name were, of course, Reckitt and Maruti Suzuki. Uh, how are you replacing, you know, that, lost business has uh, anyone uh, any big client come to replace that yeah lots of them i think we've had uh, burger pain with us uh, aritabirla capital hmm. uh, talk pharmaceuticals you got express by daily hmm. hunt we've got uh, a number of other clients which are also sort of falling into our kitty. Yeah, so exciting times for, uh, you know, agency, advertising agency business now. Uh, so much of uptake when it comes to usage of tech. Uh, generative AI, AI-related solutions. Uh, what is your strategy in that direction? Both, of course, the talent strategy and overall organization strategy. So I think our philosophy uh, very clearly for South Asia will be to be an a agency which is a, at the intersection of marketing, technology and consulting. Uh, marketing, technology uh, and, and consulting. consulting. That, that's the intersection of sweet spot for mm. us. If you need any help or any discussion around mm. marketing or the tech that deals with it and you want to be talked to we are the people to go for. If you talk of one level lower, uh, and this is something our uh, uh, our uh, global president, uh, mm. uh, uh, Hiro San also talks about, we want to be a B to B to S firm, business to business to society firm. Do the right thing for society in everything that you sort of launch. Mm. Uh, have society in mind, do the right thing for society and start defining mm. your niche when you talk about society. Mm. And the second thing he talks about is being a, people-centered transformation company. Mm. And, and, and it's not, it doesn't mean you become an HR transformation company, <laughs> but very clearly, we believe we understand the psyche of our 
consumers better, uh, mm-hmm. psyche of our clients consumers better, psyche of our own people better, psyche of clients people better. Mm-hmm. So try and do something in that space which we know about and mm-hmm. try and build an equity around that. And how are you doing that? Because people uh, problem is one of the biggest problem that this industry faces today and in the past two, two and a half years that we have seen, Densu has lost sizable amount of talent you know, some renowned names from the advertising industry. So how are you attracting that new talent to Dentsu and also trying to retain the existing talent that has done really well at, let's say, global awards or, you know, when it comes to big campaigns? So there's a history in terms of why we lost quite a quite a lot of good talent because uh, we had acquired a lot of companies at one point in time. Mm. And then we realized that clients were telling us it was getting very complicated for them to understand who to reach out to. If you have mm. 18 or 19 companies and each of them has a CEO and a CMO and a chief people officer. It becomes difficult to maneuver. Hmm. Uh, Dentsu realized that and decided we'll sort of bucket it into a few master brands. Hmm. Yes, it was unfortunately lost some of the talent. Uh, hmm. The current talent, I think, is with us. And you've seen a lot of new people all, also joining us. We've had uh, Joe's Leon joining us. We've had Sanchi joining us. Uh, Nara and you just mentioned. And a lot of people started to come back seeing the vision that hmm. we have. Youngsters, and I think that's the big uh, thing we're trying to solve for very clearly. Uh, we're trying to do a lot of different things. For example, we've launched something called as a next generation council uh, mm. in our in our company. There are strategic uh, strategic things that I'm working on. We picked up 30 of the young and budding leaders, mm. divide them into teams, and they work directly with the leadership team. Mm. Uh, they feel involved uh, 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 in sort of creating the new Densu. For example, we had uh, this experience center come up. Um, uh, I said, let's get them involved. Let's get our design team involved and design something which they want. Uh, mm. Let's not get outside architects to design it. Let people own mm. uh, what they're doing. So we're trying to pull them together, uh, trying to make them a feel a part of Densu. That doesn't mean we are ready for the future. Mm. This is sort of just getting them engaged into the current. We will have to look at a lot of upskilling, lots of upskilling. Uh, we'll have to pick on people from outside the industry and mix and match them mm. uh, to create the new Densu. At the same time, I believe that youngsters will learn much faster than me, for yeah. sure. Uh, if I give them a chance, they will do much, much better than all of us. Yeah. So, you know, when I had joined this industry and, you know, even till last couple of years, my perception of Densu has been like, you know, this aggressive person. I'm glad you brought up acquisitions, uh, you know, aggressively acquiring uh, tech forward, you know, tech, uh, like, you know, digital organizations, startups, very, very aggressively. Uh, As a leader and as a new leader of Densu, what is the direction that you want to take going forward? So it's a very interesting question, you say, because I think we've reached a stage where we've got a reasonable degree of capabilities. So we have a two-pronged approach. One is grow organically uh, and nurture existing talent uh, and and keep growing at a particular place. We are still in search for acquisitions uh, in the new age digital tech marketing domain. uh, And we'll pick up companies which fit our strategic needs. Uh, but this time it will be calculated uh, uh, movements in direction rather than the rapid, aggressive, acquisitive company that you talked about. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, Bani. With that, it's a wrap on Storyboard this week. You can catch all of our content on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Thanks for watching. We will be back same time next week. See you soon.